good afternoon. We're going to finish up our four-part series on Psalm 23 on 10 minutes of sanity in an insane world. If you remember back in the previous lessons, I'll take my handy-dandy notebook, a little Blue's Clue reference for you there. And the first one was, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We talked about what does it mean in having a shepherd. Uh, we talked about how having a shepherd uh, was a choice uh, that we choose what shepherds us. We choose what provides for us. We choose what we look to for security. We choose what we look to for our sanity. We choose what we look to for guidance. And we can choose as followers of Jesus to make the Lord our shepherd, for the shepherd is the one that will provide and protect. And we like sheep. We talked about what the sheep were like, though we were kind of stubborn and dumb and and got frightened easily. And we talked about the characteristics of sheep and how that relationship between a sheep and a shepherd was really pretty clear in the Old Testament, talking about God. And then we looked over to the New Testament where it talked about Jesus Christ being our shepherd. And then we looked in the second part where it says, he lets me he lets me rest in the green meadows. He leads me beside the peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths. And it brings honor to his name. And we talked about how the shepherd meets not only our physical needs, but our spiritual needs. And we talked about that word, shub, uh, that word restore, where God uh, uh, takes something that is bent, he takes something that is damaged, he takes something that is dry and withered, and he makes it new again. It also had the idea of uh, uh, God taking something that is on the, the wrong path and picking it up and placing it on the right path. And when we turn to him, that God restores, he shoves our soul and how God has done that so many different times. And then in part three, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even when my darkest time is going on, I'll not be afraid for you are with me and you guide me with your rod and your staff. And we talked about the presence of how the number one promise all through the Bible is, I will be with you. I will be with you. And we see that even in the name of Jesus when he comes, Emmanuel, God with us. And we looked at the, uh, the command that God says, the number one command that God tells us is not to be afraid. And we looked at the balance of those two things, that if God is with us, we, we shouldn't be afraid. We also looked at the role of the rod and the staff, how the rod was for protection from the enemies and the staff was for guiding the sheep. And today we're going to be finishing this up in verse five and six. You prepare a table before me while my enemies are watching. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is part of the psalm that I wish was different. Um, this is part of the psalm where I wish that God said, uh, you prepare a table before the. Uh, you prepare a table before me. We're going to eat after I have destroyed your enemies, and they'll never be a part of your life again. You'll never have to worry about them again. I'll take care of your enemies, and you'll no longer have to worry about them. But he doesn't. The picture here, and this is a pretty interesting picture. For you see, sheep won't eat unless they are at rest. A stressed sheep doesn't eat. So the sheep is so at peace, understanding that his enemies, which would be the lion and the bear and the other enemies, the enemies are out there lurking. As a matter of fact, he can see the enemies, but he's so at peace that he's still going to be able to eat. Why? Because between the enemies and the sheep is the shepherd. It's not that the enemies have gone away. You know, sometimes we pray and pray and pray for our enemies to go away. Lord, make this enemy, whoever it is, maybe your enemy has a face. Maybe your enemy is an addiction. Maybe your enemy is a habit, a sin, whatever you want to call it, a proclivity uh, for something destructive in your life. Maybe your enemy is yourself at times. Maybe your enemy is self-doubt. Maybe your enemy, I don't know what your enemy is. You put the name on your enemy. You put the face on your enemy. But whatever it is, God may not choose to destroy your enemy. For you see, your enemy may be a blessing. What? 
Your enemy may be a blessing. What is it that drives you back to the Father? What is it that drives you to your knees in prayer? What is it that drives you back to the Father in frustration saying, God, I can't handle this. More often than not, you would identify that as an enemy. Thank God for your enemy. For if it were not for your enemy, how many times would you just take the good times for granted? If it were not for your enemy, how many moments of desperation and prayer and honesty and searching and grasping for God would you miss? If it were not for your enemies, how would you know what victory even feels like? Someone, somebody smarter than me said, how do you know what the mountains look like unless you've been down in the valleys? God uses our enemies. God uses our enemies to drive us to him, to show us our inequities, to show us where we're not trusting the right things, to show us when we're looking in the wrong direction for answers. I've got some enemies in my life. I face them daily. Most of my enemies are from within. Most of my enemies are unforgiveness and bitterness. And I turned them over to the Lord. And I said, Lord, take care of my enemies. And when I get my eyes on the Lord, it's almost as if my enemies are non-existent. I know they're out there, but my eyes are so focused on the Lord that I get this peace that passes all understanding. And then after a little while, I look past the Lord and I see the lion and the bear. And I begin to get nervous. And I begin to say, Lord, I trusted you. I, I, I trusted you to take care of the lion and the bear. And look, there they are. He said, yeah, he said, the lion and the bear are still there. And you know what, Mark, until the day you die, until the day you come to spend an eternity with me, your lion and bear are always going to be there. So stop worrying so much about your lion and bear and get your eyes back on me and let me tend to the lion and bear. There was a illustration I heard years ago about a lady that struggled with fear, worry. And she said that there was a piano teacher that taught her how to handle that fear. And she said, hold out your hand. And she did. And she says, count your fingers. She, she says, one, two, three, four, five. Now, those of you who are clever are saying, uh-uh, four fingers and a thumb. Well, you, you know, be clever all you want to, but it doesn't work with this illustration. She said, just remember this. When you get into fear, four this I have Jesus and grab hold of that finger, grab hold of that pinky and hold on to it. And whenever you're facing fear, whenever you're facing your enemies, whenever you're facing things that shake you up and for this, I have Jesus. Years later, they found the lady. She had grown old. She had grown feeble. And she had passed away in the hospital room. And when they came in there, they found her grasping her finger, even in the valley of the shadow of death. For this I have. Jesus, I don't know what you're fearing today, but for this you have Jesus. And when you look to him, even in the presence of your enemies... God will give you a peace. An anointing with oil will not touch base on this too much, but you look in the Old Testament, and this was usually something of affirmation. And uh, it represented God's presence and approval. Uh, God would anoint, he, uh, Samuel anointed David and Saul as king. This anointing was Samuel's, or, or this anointing was a sign that, that God had chosen them for a task. And David says, you anoint my head with oil. You anoint me. Shepherds used anointing to heal their sheep and to soothe their sheep. So the soothing and the healing and the choosing of God and the anointing of the sheep for a special purpose. And when you understand this, surely goodness and mercy, mercy. Mercy is when we get good things that we don't deserve. I must admit to you, and I deserve 
not much mercy in my life. It's only mercy. When God looks down and he says, you don't, you, 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 I will bestow mercy on you, not because of what you deserve, but because of who I am. In James, it said, every good and perfect gift come down from the father of lights above. We are filled day by day and renewed day by day of his mercy. The Lord is my shepherd. He protects and he provides and he leads and he guides and he takes care of our enemies. And what is our job as sheep? Stay connected to the shepherd. Just stay connected to the shepherd. How do you do that? Listening for his voice. And how does he speak? Through scripture. How does he speak to you? Through scripture, through people, through sermons, through songs, through books, through the beauty of creation. I guarantee you this. If you're listening for his voice, you can hear him so often. The Lord is my shepherd and he'll take care of all my needs. I hope this series has been a blessing to you. I've enjoyed it. In the midst of a pandemic when there's so much uncertainty, for this I have Jesus, who is my shepherd. God bless you and have a great day.